Uh, good morning, everybody. Today is 10th December 2020. The day is uh, Thursday, and my name is Farhan Mazar. And right now, I am with the 11 Cambridge class, and uh, we are studying physics 5054. We are revising, and we are basically practicing the past papers. We are working on the paper two, and in this video, we are going to work on. Uh, October, November 2018, 2-1 paper. We are working on its section B. And in the section B, um, in our yesterday we worked uh, on some of the questions of the section B. Uh, today we will continue that. So let's go to the section B. Let me go to that questions. So... Here we have question seven, eight. Okay, so we are done with this question eight. In in our previous lesson, we are done with the question number eight, and we are also we are also done with this question. Yes, we are done with this question also. Question number nine. We have started question number ten. So, if you have your booklets with you, you can open that question. And we are done with the A part. Yeah, we are done the B first question part. Number B. And second part, the third part. We will start now. Now we are through the third part, yeah. So, the third part says that the figure 10.1 shows an alpha particle entering a uniform magnetic field. The magnetic field is out of pitch. And on the figure, draw the path of the alpha particles in the magnetic field. It's a two mark question. Let me copy it from here. Let's take this to the. Okay, so we will copy it from here. And we will take it in the paint. So I can explain to you. We open the paint first. Paint. Okay, so we paste it here. Okay. Now, uh, the magnetic field is out of the page. Alpha particles are positively charged. So we have to decide that in which direction they will deflect. You know, when a charged particle is projected into uh, into a magnetic field, we use left hand rule. The left hand rule, you will take your left hand like this, you take your left hand, you stretch your fingers, these three fingers, the thumb, the index finger and the middle finger. You stretch them like this so that they are perpendicular to each other. They make 90 degree angle with each other, you see. So I have stretched the fingers of my left hand in such a way that they are perpendicular to each other. This is my left hand. Now, uh, F, M, C. F, your thumb is F. This index finger is M. And this middle finger is C. F, M, C. F, M, C. F is the force which the charged particle experience. M is the magnetic field. And C is the direction of the conventional current or the direction of the movement of the positive charges. So alpha particle is positive charge, so there is no problem. So now I will apply on this, uh, the thing, the situation which is shown on your screen. The magnetic field is out of. The magnetic field is out of the screen. The charged particles are going towards right. So my thumb is pointing downward. You see, I'm applying this left hand rule. FMC, magnetic field is out of the screen. The charge, the direction of the current is from left to right. So my thumb then points downward. So it means that they will be deflected in the downward direction. Okay? So. They will be deflected downward. So these particles, these are alpha particles, they will be deflected like this. Okay. 
This is a two mark question. Do you understand the left hand rule? Yes. Muskan, do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, how okay. did we came to know that we have to choose left hand rule rather than right hand rule? Sorry, I did not. I am not able to hear you. Sir, हम लोगों ने left hand rule क्यों use किया, right hand rule क्यों नहीं use किया? Because when a charged particle is projected in a magnetic field to find out the direction of the deflection, that's a law we use left hand rule. Okay, sir. Next part. The right hand rule is not used for this purpose. You understand? Yes. So the charged particle yes, will be deflected downward towards the bottom of the page. Okay. Then he says, "Explain why the alpha particle follow the path you you drew in the B third part." Now we have to explain that why we are saying so. You know, you are now now you have to write that we applied the left hand rule, and when the charged particles they move in a magnetic field, which is out of the out of the its direction is out of the page, and the charged particle will experience a force. And according to the left-hand rule, that the direction of that force will be towards the bottom of the page. So that's why we we have done this. So let me check the marking scheme. So let's see what the marking scheme says. It says that uh, we are question number ten. Okay, so there we go. Fleming's left hand rule or motor rule or rule described of moving charge is in is a current. Okay, so you see uh, the marking scheme says that uh, because we have projected a positive charge in a magnetic field whose direction is out of the page, so by applying the left hand rule, we have decided. And the, what is the left hand rule? If you stretch your fingers in such a way, the of fingers of the left hand, the thumb, the index finger, and the middle finger. In such a way that uh, the thumb is in the direction of the force which the charged particle will experience. The index finger is in the direction of the magnetic field, and the middle finger is in the direction of the direction of the current or the movement of the positive charges. So, by using the Fleming's left-hand rule, we are able to uh, able to decide on the direction of the charged particle, the deflection of the charged particle. Ji, will you able to write the answer? It's a one mark question. Sir, I have written. Yeah, what you wrote? When charged particle is projected in magnetic field out of page to find out the charged particle, Fleming's le left hand uh, left hand rule is used. Okay. So one uh, grammatically one thing. Uh, Which makes the sense a little different is you said uh, read your first sentence slowly. When charge when charge particle is projected in magnetic field out of page. Ah, this out of page. This is the direction of the magnetic field. So your sentence is not clearly saying that this is the direction of the magnetic field. I am getting the feeling that uh, you are telling us. You see, uh, when when the 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 way you wrote that the, it is out of the page, I get the feeling that you are talking about the direction of the charged particle, whereas you are trying to say that uh, we have projected the charged particles into a magnetic field whose direction is out of the page. I mean, the direction of the magnetic field is out of the page. Okay, just only this uh, thing went wrong. Otherwise, it's good. Muskan, you have written. Muskan, do you have? Have you written anything? Yes. Yeah. So 
Would you like so, to read your answer? Alpha, Tikal, Straight, Where magnetic field? Jaldi for ho. Hmm. I think our network is not good. Yes, Muskan, your network is not good. Because our sound is breaking. Yes, your voice is continuously interrupting. Next part. Okay, so we are moving to the next part in a nuclear reactor at a power station. So, thorium-239 is made to undergo nuclear fission. State what is meant by the nuclear fission. In the nuclear fission, what we do, we bombard a larger nucleus with neutrons or alpha particles. And what happens, that larger nucleus breaks. And when that larger nucleus breaks, it, it forms two, two or three smaller nuclei. That is called nuclear fusion, and during this, lot of lot of lot of energy is given out. So, in nuclear fusion, basically, a larger nucleus is broken into smaller nuclei. You understand? So, he says splitting of nucleus in the marking scheme, he only wrote splitting of nucleus. You must count my net tissue. Okay. Will you write the definition of the fion? Sir, I have written the answer. Yeah. In nuclear fusion, nucleus split into its constituents. It do not split into its constituent. It splits into two smaller or three smaller nuclei. Constituents may split. That is a diff has a different meaning. It splits into smaller nuclei. Okay, sir, next part. So what we have written? In nuclear fusion, nuclear split into two or three smaller nu uh, nuclei. Yes. A lot of energy is also given out. State what happens to plutonium-239 nucleus in the nuclear reactor to cause fusion. So here he has told us that... Uh, He has given us the, so this nucleus will uh, split and it will give out alpha particle and it will make uranium nucleus. The plutonium will convert into uranium plus it will give alpha particle and it will Oh, no, 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 no. The question is different. This question is, state what happens to plutonium nucleus in the nuclear fusion, nuclear reactor, to cause fusion. I think it, it must be bombarded with something. Yes. A neutron is fired at a plutonium nucleus or plutonium nucleus absorbs neutron. We take a neutron and we accelerate it and then we bombard it on the plutonium nucleus. And then the plutonium nucleus will split. You understand what I'm saying? We will bombard the plutonium nucleus with a neutron. And that will split the plutonium nucleus. Write this answer and then read it.
You have written your answer. Hello. Sir, I have written plutonium yeah. the nucleus will be bombarded by neutrons. Size which will cause it to break down. Size doesn't matter. Size doesn't matter. Size doesn't matter. It to split so into uranium particle. Yeah, Nikhil. No, no, no. Don't write this. It will split into uranium. It's enough. Okay. Split into uranium. Okay, sir. Next. Don't write uranium. Achha, state one advantage of generating electricity in a nuclear power station rather than using an oil fired power station. In the nuclear, if you use nuclear reactor to produce electricity, when you use oil power station, uh, they produce greenhouse gases. And but when you use the nuclear power station to produce electricity, they do not produce greenhouse gases. Achha, one big if Difference between both the power stations. You understand? And when you compare it with the wind turbines, the wind turbines uh, are not reliable on in all the seasons. In some seasons, you know, yeah. the wind will be good, and in some seasons, there might be no wind. So the wind turbines cannot provide the electricity uh, 24 hours uh, or throughout the year because when the wind is good, they will produce electricity. But when the wind is down, the wind depends upon the season. So you see, they, we cannot rely on the wind turbine for for uninterrupted supply of electricity for uh, for a whole year. But the nuclear power station. It is, it can provide you electricity in all the seasons. Whenever is, there is a demand, it can produce electricity, no problem. Okay, so uh, on your, on your screen, the marking scheme is showing also that when you compare the nuclear power station with the oil fired power station, he says no carbon dioxide, no sulfur dioxide. Nitrogen oxides, greenhouse gases emitted or do not contribute to global warming, acid rain. These kind of things are not in the nuclear power station. And when you compare it with the wind turbine power stations, so the nuclear power station is very reliable. And they also, the nuclear power station also require smaller area. The wind turbines, when you put a plant of wind turbines, they cover a very, very large area. The nuclear power station takes very small area. Write the diff. Next part. Okay. Oh, the paper is over. Okay. Now we will start May June 2018. Yes, yes. We will start the next paper. We will do it section B. Okay. Muskan, are you with us? So now we are going on to the summer 2018 to one paper. Let me take this marking scheme as well. Okay. Summer 2018 to one.
Okay, so now we are working on the, uh, you know, the, this is uh, basically, oh, take it too long. this is basically summer, uh, is summer paper, uh, is summer paper, May, June, 2018 to one. You have your booklets. So take this, uh, pap uh, this paper out in your booklets and we are going to tamp its section B. Okay. We will work on its section B and we will see what we can do. Okay, so here we come to the. Okay, so we have the section B of the May, June 2018 to 1 paper. Section B. Should we start? You have taken this paper out? Yes, sir. Okay. So the first question is electromagnetic radiation is produced by the sun and travel from the sun to the earth. Some of the statements below are true and some of them are false. Put a tick in the box after uh, each statement to show whether it is true or false. So he says the gamma rays are used to kill cancerous cells but can also cause cancer that is true sir i think that's true the gamma rays can cause cancer also and but they are also used to uh, you know so it's true let me highlight this so this is true Jee. so this highlighted thing is true let me check in the marking scheme also so we are on the question number i think Question number nine. Question number nine. Yeah. Okay. True, false, false, true. The first one is true. Okay. Now, infrared is used in the sun beds. No, that's wrong. In the sunbed, we use UV light, ultraviolet light. So the second what one is, is wrong. What? In the sunbed, we use ultraviolet. Next is radio waves have the highest frequency okay, in the electromagnetic spectrum. That is wrong. The highest frequency in the electromagnetic spectrum Gamma rays has the highest frequency. Radio waves has the largest wavelength. So the second, third one is wrong. That's false. The next says the higher the frequency of the radiation, the smaller is the wavelength in air. That's true. That is true. Next. The fourth one is true. Yes, sir. Okay. Muskan, are you done with this? Muskan is having that tissue. I think she is doing it. Okay. Okay, okay. Eight minute, uh, there are video. We have to stop this video recording of the video. Just give me a minute and I will be back. 